If you sell software, we'd like to talk to you too. We can help get your software in front of some of the hundreds of thousands of AWS customers across 190 countries. You provide us your software on an Amazon machine image and tell us what it costs to use it. We'll take care of billing and then pay out the funds to you. Whether you're looking for software to use or hoping to sell your software to new customers, come visit AWS Marketplace today. When you're building an application, you want to Co-host Jeff Frick. Uh, Jeff, it's been quite a day. Uh, this is the Cube, by the way, Silicon Angles production. Uh, the Cube drops into events. We try to extract the signal from the noise, bring you coverage of these events. This is really our first AWS show. We hope to do more. We were invited in by Amazon. Wall-to-wall uh, -wall coverage. We had Amazon executives on. We had partners on. We had customers on. Uh, we brought a few of our, our friends on and. Uh, Really got a good sense, I think, Jeff, of the momentum of Amazon, the innovation of Amazon, uh, the commitment to the enterprise, uh, the richness of the ecosystem, uh, and as I say, the, the the pace of innovation is just astounding. It's it's like I said at the top of the show. I've never seen anything like this in the IT business. I've been in there you know, 20 plus years. You've got an incumbent that we forecast is going to do three billion dollars this year in AWS uh, revenue, an incumbent that's also the disruptor. I've never seen that before. What's, what's interesting too, Dave, is they, they've disrupted a lot of things. I mean, <laughs> th there aren't a lot of companies that you can look at historically that have had a tremendous amount of success in one area and then been able to leverage into other areas. And that includes Microsoft, that includes Intel, that includes a lot of companies that are really good at their core value proposition and then try to evolve the company over time. I mean, this is a bookseller that then evolved into basically the retail platform and completely changed that. Then they got into the tablet business and really changed the book publishing business. And now they've used that as a fundamental infrastructure to change kind of IT services and computing resources on demand. So the fact that they've got this culture of innovation and this culture of kind of continuous, um, just this, this march of, of innovation and really listening to their customers, because they've always been customer-centric because they've been a, a click away from losing them historically, is really something special. I, I go back to Andy's uh, uh, keynote this morning and he talked about just some really basic themes, just a relentless uh, reduction in costs, it's relentless innovation, um, and this really dedicated uh, listening to customers and adjusting the roadmap and going out and delivering accordingly. And it seems to have been supported in the people that we've talked to, some of this partner ecosystem, which, which I think is, uh, again, analogous to, to what Apple was able to do to really leverage their position and take it up a notch. It's a pretty amazing so, story. So we love to use uh, sports analogies here at the, on theCUBE. So I think that we're entering the fourth quarter of, of, a, of a cloud game with many games to go. It's like a, an extended series, okay? So what I mean by that is, we had the first quarter was experimentation, then in 2008 and 2009, we had an accelerated move to the cloud because of the economic downturn. People trying to reduce CapEx, go to variable expense. And then what we saw is a, a real, you know, new emerging innovation beyond that, right? We started to see uh, a, a, a new ecosystem emerged, people started to say, okay, we can do more than just my mess for less, let's start to get deeper business integration into the cloud. And now what we're seeing is Amazon really expanding, leveraging its you know, many hundreds of thousands, let's say it has 200,000 customers, leveraging that into the enterprise, that was a wake up call for other enterprise players. Now what's happening is many of those enterprise players are partners, of Amazon, we heard SAP today, we heard, heard Oracle, we even heard VMware as a partner of Amazon AWS. Right, right. 
At the same time, you have all these disruptive companies essentially supporting the Amazon ecosystem and some legacy companies, as legacies of but traditional IT companies, like a NetApp, for example, right, who's right. putting putting forth their value proposition into the AWS you know, cloud. So you have all that coming together now in 2013 and there's a massive groundswell right. of innovation. At the same time, you've got all these competitive forces going. We were at the OpenStack conference a couple weeks ago. One of the premises that we came out of this conference with in the OpenStack conference is OpenStack in effect, while originally we said as a Hail Mary against Amazon, we're now starting to formulate the premise that OpenStack is essentially competing with a lot of the traditional IT suppliers, cloud services. We're talking about VMware in particular. I mean, it's really, you know, if you had to handicap the horses, VMware and OpenStack are looking very strong. Obviously, you got IBM and they're such a huge services company. Right. You know, Citrix, I don't know, you maybe have an opinion on there, but, but it seems to me that Amazon is going to, you know, be the icebreaker and take a huge chunk of market share and you're going to have other people fighting over you know, what's left in the enterprise. I don't know what your take is on well, that. Well, I, I think there's two, it's, it's fascinating to watch. I think there's two things that I also want to kind of throw in. One is uh, the shadow IT that was enabled, but kind of by the, the resource issues in, the, in, in, in 2008, 2009, but it was also all about the developer and the developer taking control of their world and not having to wait for people to ship them uh, servers and stuff to get started. And, and I think now what's happened is the, the rise of the developer, the power of the developer has now come front and center and everyone really wants to support that developer and remove any impediment that they have to getting their job done. And that has happened to dovetail with really this infrastructure on tap, these resources on tap, which is pretty, um, pretty phenomenal. The other thing I, I found fascinating today is we had a couple old school storage guys whose customers are telling them we like you, but, but we've got opportunities that we need to get some of the stuff in the cloud. How can we work with you to take advantage of the attributes that you have, but still start to move into this lower cost uh, opportunities? And, and, and to their credit, they're here at the show trying that, to figure it out. That's a dangerous game they're playing though. Yeah. I, mean, I know what you're saying to their credit. And, and you know that's the big question. Is it TAM expansion or... <laughs> <laughs> are they cutting their own throats? Right, but like it's, yeah. it's it's hard to reinvent yourself as a company, and 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 the other way to look at that, right, is you can let somebody else eat your lunch, or you yeah. can try to eat it yourself oh, yeah, and true. reinvent. And I, and I also think it's 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 driven by customer demand. I, mean, right. I think that's right. very important. So some of the things that Amazon needs to do better. Let's talk about that. So Amazon is tempering, I think, its 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 posture toward the private cloud. It's it's, it's clearly embracing that notion. Whereas I even sense that at reinvent that there was some. It wasn't hostility, Amazon's not a hostile company, but there was some negativity toward that notion of private cloud, like why do that? It's non-differentiated heavy lifting. I think Amazon is recognizing as it goes to sell deeper into the enterprise that, you know, look, we need to rely on our ecosystem to connect. I think the second thing is you're starting to see the ecosystem of partners build out. Um, you know, I saw guys from Deloitte here. You know, let's say Deloitte, Accenture, IBM, those are the big service providers. They control a lot of the dollars on the chessboard. Right. Um, we didn't hear those names in the keynote, but they're clearly watching, they're clearly here. You're seeing guys like Capgemini, which is a somewhat smaller player, but definitely with a global footprint, adding value on top of AWS. They see AWS as an opportunity. The other big play is SAP. We're hearing a lot about HANA, spinning up instances very quickly. We heard Oracle as a partner, and a gazillion interesting, innovative startups. And that to me is the power of, of Amazon, but I, but I still think there's still some learnings that are going on. I mean, I'm sure Amazon would admit this, learnings going on to sell into the enterprise. It's a, it's a, it's a different game, and I think their philosophy is, look, we're just going to keep doing our thing, keep innovating, keep cutting prices, and not worry so much about the competition, focus on the customer. Right. My question to you is, can, the traditional enterprise guys keep up. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's, it's going to be tough. Uh, we talked last time at OpenStack, Christian or Clayton Christensen, my all-time favorite business uh, book writer from Harvard, talking about you know it is very hard with continuous change to catch your discontinuous innovation. You know, you just make better and better and better hard drives. You forget when they move from six-inch to four inch to three inch, you miss that. It's, it is a big challenge you've got. Established customer base who's driving for uh, incremental innovation in the, in the products that you already sell them, and you've got uh, numbers you got to hit, you got salespeople out there that are working, so it's really hard to make a big 
a big shift. Uh, it'll it'll be an interesting challenge to say. The good news is they're in an incumbent position, and I think with some forward thoughts or forward looking to f try to find a way. What is that hybrid step? There may be a hybrid step to to play, but it could take an entirely different. Um, point of view. It'll be an interesting Well, it's a big market. I think everybody's watching Amazon's playbooks. They're going to try to learn from the from the best. Uh, but I'll tell you, my observation is many of them aren't getting done. I'm not going to name names. That wouldn't be fair. But I, I tell you, I had a Twitter little, little war, a little urinary Olympics with, with one Twitter person talking about Amazon's SLAs. And I said, all right, well, what's your SLAs? This is this cloud right, service provider. Right. How are your, how our SLAs are so much better. Great. Send me a copy. He said, go to the website. Went right. to the website, couldn't find them. Right. So I said, all right, well, I couldn't find them. Oh, well, let me get them to you. Hey, listen, I got to go through AR. Right. Okay, contact the AR people. Can I get the, I just want a copy of the SLA. Right. Can't right. find a copy of the right. SLA. So my point is, a lot of Amazon's competitors are talking the talk, but I want to see them walk the walk. And I think the reality, Jeff, is that <laughs> Amazon was so far out in front. Now, having said that, these guys have resources, you know, you talk about crossing the chasm. I think in 2013, what's different is these large companies have massive resources. They have huge you know, amounts of cash in the balance sheet. They're not afraid to use it. They'll buy companies. They actually can move a lot faster than they could you know, when that original concept was written. So I think there's a new version right. of crossing the chasm. And I think these legacy companies, these traditional companies are building bridges. And I do think they will figure it out with their customers because their customers want them to win. Why? Because they have so much investment built up in right. that legacy right. infrastructure. And at the same time, you've got this new model coming and I think it's unstoppable. But then the other kind of funny thing was Andy talked about it, all the services and stuff. He had three buckets of people services that Amazon yeah. now wants to sell, which is an interesting indication that they want to get into the enterprise, and can they successfully sell that stuff? They you mentioned professional services, uh, training, there was one other one, um, which, is a, which is a nice indication that they're trying to play it, but that's a very different business model than click here, accept terms, and accept terms and ship, so. Well, I think a lot of that is Amazon, I think Amazon's strategy is to really enable their ecosystem to deliver a lot of those services, so they, I don't think they, I think they absolutely will not compete with their, their service partners from the standpoint of going belly to belly into right, right, right. accounts. But it's just, it's, it's just more of an indication again of, of kind of coming from a different direction but headed straight towards that enterprise with, with an acknowledgement that we do have to have more than just a click here, accept terms, and, and, uh, and chip or download just, or configure. The, Jeff, the other big question I have is, okay, so we've, Amazon doesn't talk about its roadmap. You know, we don't know what's going Unless on. Unless you're a customer, the apparently we can go in and. Uh, well, we are a customer, but I, I think they <laughs> saved that for you know Netflix and Nasdaq. I think they uh, they probably don't share that with Wikibon and Silicon Angle, <laughs> but, uh, but we'll ask. And, and if we're not under NDA, we'll publish. <laughs> so you got to be careful, Amazon. But so my point is, they've got so much innovation that we don't know about. Um, they had to invent a lot of stuff. I mean, they were doing SOA before you know the industry was doing SOA. They helped invent the whole hyperscale market. They, you know, they're a big data practitioner. They are doing things in IT that universities, you know, aren't doing. Right. Now, they're obviously learning from universities, but they're doing things that, 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 that universities aren't doing. So, a lot of the innovation in this industry, as we know, is it's coming from consumer, um, and, and Amazon and Facebook and Google are a lot of the guys behind that innovation. Um, now, I think, again, the, Enterprise guys are fast followers, and I think they can, you know, very clearly in my mind, compete, and they will compete very successfully on the basis of SLAs, uh, on the basis of security, despite the fact that Amazon has good security within Amazon, sometimes the data has to move out yeah. of Amazon, and that's where some of these other ecosystem providers play. You look at a company like VMware with such a huge install base, and such a huge affinity and asset base buildup, and, uh, and others, obviously Microsoft playing, and and IBM and HP betting on OpenStack. There's a big market out there. It's going to be it's going to be fragmented. I would expect Jeff, you're going to see fragments of clouds. I think there's no question about it. You're going to see Oracle clouds, IBM clouds, VMware and its ecosystem clouds. Obviously, the Amazon cloud, Google cloud, Azure cloud. The market is enormous. Can the market support all those clouds? Probably for a while. For probably for a while, but then eventually it's going to settle gonna down. But I, you know, a couple of just. Final notes. One, I thought this a lot of conversation at the last couple guests about Amazon Direct Connect, and it's it's kind of an interesting to think that you know you've got another data center across the street 
with my boxes in it that are that got the hot connection into the AWS. Cloud. So how is that going to morph over time? Is, are all the on-prems going to actually be at this Equinix across the street? And, and how's that going to morph? And if it's across the street, why don't we just tear down the street and, and roof it over the top? I, you know that. I, I, that the whole thing kills me. I mean, Amazon's got to be sitting there saying, "Yeah, sure, yeah, so, no problem." So I thought you that know, was interesting. The other thing with with Come service on mesh, in. yeah, Sean. The water's fine. Sean said it's <laughs> service mesh, and at the end of the day, if you are if you are the guy provisioning resources to do something, do you really care under the covers and how that's allocated? And I thought that was also interesting with our the high end storage guy saying, you know. There'll be a suite of offerings that will fulfill the resource obligation or resource needs of that particular operation. Do I really yeah. need to know what you know the how and the why? And I love the service mesh story for the for the conversation we were just having about you know multiple clouds. You're going to talk about federated clouds, and that's what service service mesh. The name says it all. I mean, bringing those clouds together. So I really like that strategy a lot. I think it's a winner, and uh, and obviously we'll be watching. All right, Jeff. Well, listen, it's been uh, fabulous working with you. It's a great day. Um, we got all kinds of stuff coming up. Let me just a, a, a quick uh, uh, summary here. So we have um, next week, uh, we've got, uh, let's see, we're at EMC World. Yep. Uh, and then we do SAP Sapphire at, that following week. We're also at uh, the ServiceNow Knowledge 13 conference. You and I will be doing That's that right. conference. Really excited about that. Uh, we're beginning our summer tour. Uh, we're going to be at IBM Edge. Uh, very excited about that conference. Um, we were, of course, at the Excel uh, Partners event today. So go to siliconangle.com, check out the blog post, The River. You'll see all the videos that we do. We'll have a companion blog post, post and an analysis. Go to Wikibon, you'll see what we call the shock and awe pages, the aggregation pages. All the research on Wikibon is free. It's about peers and practitioners helping each other. Go to siliconangle, or go to, sorry, youtube.com slash siliconangle for all of our YouTube videos, all of our playlists, and you know, keep watching, you guys are a great audience, really appreciate all the tweets, all the questions you guys sent in today, and uh, Give a shout out the to the crew too. Great job with the crew today. In, uh, uh, Kenny and Mick, really appreciate all the help. Andre, uh, the new kid in the block, we've been working with you uh, had him working more today. this year, so <laughs> great job guys, really appreciate all the local support. And uh, Dave Butler and Stu back at the office, Kristen Nicole who runs our our editorial desk, and uh, and that's it. We're wrapped from here, from the Moscone. I'm Dave Vellante, he's Jeff Frick. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.